So if you saw the title of this video, you probably clicked on it because maybe it was applicable to you. Maybe you're someone who has injured your ankle before in running, in sprinting, in changing direction or whatever in a game. This video is about how you can prevent this and become more prepared for the, for the demands that are placed on your ankle in the game that you play. So obviously this video is not about contact injuries. It's not about a big fat guy that falls on your ankle and then your ankle is broken. It's not about that. That's a contact injury. I'm talking about non-contact ankle injuries. These are super common and I honestly believe it has a lot to do with how people train their ankle and how people think about training their ankle and especially people like coaches, how they think about training their athletes and preparing their ankles. So commonly when athletes come to me, athletes always ask, okay, what is the best drill I can do for my ankle? Uh, my physio told me I need to increase the mobility of my ankle. I need to increase the stability from my ankle. These are all buzzwords that people think will help them when it comes to improving their ankle strength or improve, improving their ankle's level of preparedness for their sport. And honestly, if I had to be really blunt, it won't. Let's take a look at where most people hurt their ankles or most people that come to me who have hurt their ankles in a non-contact way. Most of them hurt their ankles by changing direction. This is something that is really, really common. People rapidly change direction and their ankle folds in and usually it's when you are producing force or you stick into the ground and you're changing direction and your ankle cannot handle the force and it just basically folds over and then you get this swollen ankle or you hurt your ankle. This has happened so many times with a lot of my athletes who say, oh, I just changed direction or I literally just corrected on my line and then I fell in and basically that's how their ankle got hurt. What's the first thing people then look to, which is strange, is the mobility and the stability of the ankle. The problem with this idea is that none of those things will impact the way that your ankle handles these types of demands under high speeds. Because we have to look at the actual demand that got you injured. Because at the end of the day, the demand exceeded your capacity and therefore you got injured. That is basically at its base what soft or what non-contact injuries are the demand exceeded the capacity and this is what happened to you or maybe it happened to you but to most the most of my athletes now when we look at what the demand did to you we have to look at what are we going to do to get you more prepared for that and if your answer is mobility and stability tell me how any of these drills in the foot will help in with it. the following Think about the speeds at which these tasks, tasks are being done. And don't think about a personal attack on physios or anything like that. Think about the drill. Think about the speed at which these exercises are being done. Think about the actual stimulus that is being given to the body to adapt and become stronger. Is that enough to make the ankle, make the structure stronger and more resilient and in a way, give it a similar stimulus that it will ex experience when doing these tasks in order to be prepared for them. Because at best, these exercises that I showed you now are really early stage rehab exercises. Yet, these are the drills that athletes choose to protect or uh, get themselves more prepared for this. And it's not because athletes are stupid. It's not because anything like that. It's just because we are misled or maybe we aren't thinking deep enough about these issues. So look at what you're doing to prepare it and look at what you're preparing for. Does it match? And I'm not saying if you come back from an injury, it's more than fine if you do that from an injury, but that should already be an indication. If you have to do something at early stage rehab after you broke your ankle or whatever, and you're doing these exercises, but then you choose to do these similar exercises when you are healthy, it makes absolutely no sense. Because that is the reason why you do that when you come off of early stage rehab. And that's just because you it's low impact, it's barely anything, so it's good to do at the beginning because you are building up from nothing. That cannot be the same when you are doing that. So if you actually want some, some stimulation to actually adapt and become better, you need something that is stimulating. That is not stimulating. 
at its core, we have four motions from the ankle, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, eversion, inversion. And all these motions, basically, of the ankle will get tested and will be happening in a game. But the caveat is it happens at super high speeds. And the one key, there is no other key, the one key to train this really well, apart from actually playing your sport, is to do plyometrics, jumping and landing, ground contact, in various, various planes of motion, will basically be training the exact same thing of your ankle. When we look at change of direction, for example, when we look at chaotic play in sports, we see the motions of the ankle, when we see de deceleration, when we see cutting, when we see swerving, we see eversion, we see inver inversion, we see plantar flexion, we see everything at high speeds. We see the ankle going into that motion and then also sticking in that motion at high speeds, resisting it, and then also basically redirecting it. This, in essence, is plyometrics. That is what plyometrics are as well. Plyometrics will train this. Now, let's look at the same thing. Let's ridicule it the same way I ridiculed the rehab exercises. Okay, let's look at what plyometrics do. Look at plyometrics and look a change of direction. Look at the ankle when we put it in slow motion. These are your best bet to get your ankles super strong and stiff. Don't look at exercises like mobility and buzzwords like mobility and stability. You don't need more mobility to be able to do this. This is not, these are not mobile ankles. These did not come from pushing your knee towards a wall to be able to get more mobile ankles. This did not come from that. If you're an athlete and you're looking at performance, you have to look at those type of things. If you want to get to the higher end of the performance, you need to train there. You need to train there to be prepared for that. You can't expect to do these type of drills and then be prepared for these type of things. It will never work. You need to do things that actually do that. And if you want to get your ankles really strong, you need to be doing plyometrics two to three times per week. And the main problem I see with this is the type of plyometrics that are in athletes' programs. Athletes do not jump and land in their programs. This is a big problem. I recently had a program from a kid's school. He came into my gym. Um, we are training together now. He's working with me in the off-season. The gym program that they have, I think the only jumping that they have in their entire program, they have three gym sessions at their strength and conditioning at their school. The only jumping in their program is two sets of box jumps for three reps. And now, if I can help you already, no, a box jump is not considered a plyometric because it does not have a ground contact time because you are jumping and you're landing on top of a box and nothing else. A plyometric is with a ground contact, right? So more like a pogo jump, those type of things. That is a short ground contact enough to be considered a plyometric. A box jump is not a plyometric. Most of the box jump will be training maybe your rate of force development, maybe something like that. But that is basically it. So if I can help you now, try and do plyometrics in your program two to three times per week. If you don't know how, you can always come to my Instagram, Move Me PC. You can shoot me a DM and I can help you by giving you a free week of my total athlete program no strings attached it's a free week of my total athlete program in a pdf format usually you train off my app but the free week will be given as a pdf in that program you have fly metrics you have sprints you have change of direction you have everything that will get you prepared for your sport as well as gym sessions so if you want to get hooked up with that shoot me a shot on the dm hope you enjoyed the video see you next time